Coming up, investing in infrastructure, why one big player is going long by focusing on oil transport. The CEO of Rocky Mountain Resources is coming right up, and this is Bloomberg. Well, let's get some more insight yeah. now on oil and infrastructure. Our Alex Steele is standing by with a special guest who's betting big on oil transport. Alex. Okay, but I don't even know what ruthenium is, and that makes me feel really bad about myself. I need more information on that, guys. You're stumping me. Uh, all right, well, one big chart that everyone in the industry is looking at is how much the oil market needs from OPEC. You see the divergence in this chart that we can bring up for you between OPEC and the IEA. This chart shows the divergence of the OPEC call on their crude, and the divergence means no one really knows what to make of U.S. shale production. Well, here to help us make uh, some sense of that is Chad Brownstein. He's a man on the ground. He heads up Rocky Mountain Resources. He acquires natural resource assets, including oil production, infrastructure, and he's focused on the Colorado market. He tends to acquire assets ranging anywhere from $30 million to $500 million. Chad, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Alex. Nice to see you. So uh, how do you factor in a shale forecast for, the, for next year? Well, my call is up 20% in 2018. The years 15 and 16 had negative CapEx growth for the first time since 1983, and the market's buoyed by that. And ultimately, when you look to see what's happening in the United States, the IEA had a positive outlook on what's going to happen in the U.S. when it comes to pricing, but I think they're off on their prediction. The model is being driven today, in my mind, by the infrastructure spend of the United States. There's $200 billion that will be spent every year for the next 10 years. Colorado is a microcosm of that. If you look at the triangle of Denver, Aspen, and Glenwood Springs, there's a $125 million bridge being built that's not factored in. The ultimate value here is that petroleum products are going into infrastructure, aggregates are building the roads in this country, and that's going to drive prices much higher than they are today. Well, okay, well, hold on one second. So you can see shale production going up 20%, but then you still see higher oil prices. Explain that to me. We see uh, shale production value going up 20%, not the production itself. So, so what's so, the distinction between the two? So we see prices at closer to 70, uh -huh. and we see sustained drilling at the level that occurred in 17. So we have a forecast where the dollar is being spent on current production. We basically produce 10 million barrels a year. We're now exporting 2 million barrels a year, maybe a little more. We have eight to 10 that we're still importing. So you're gonna have consistent growth when it comes to the shale producers, but the price driver to get the, the value to $70 a barrel is gonna come from aggregate spending. You know, U.S. aggregates is a market that's roughly 125 million tons of cement a year. Right. There's roughly three and a half million tons of aggregates being spent a year. The Midcon mine that I'm involved with, for example, in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, which is a magnificent city, is driving the infrastructure spent throughout Colorado. Colorado's got a $6 billion annual spend it needs to put forth, and you're gonna see a lot of petroleum products that aren't priced into any of the Wall Street models driving crude price up in the U.S. So the derivatives like pipelines, et cetera, you're going to need a higher oil price and then justify spending on that. Well, you, you certainly are going to have to have infrastructure spend. We have a, a terrific project that's connecting uh, the western slope of Colorado to the Rocky Mountain region that's a rail transport business. And ultimately, you're going to see us driving a lot of the ingredients that go into some shale and some infrastructure out of a, a rail business that in many ways will support what's happening in the oil patch of Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska and so forth. And, and we're going to get to those specific infrastructure plays in a sec, but I want to take a look at a terminal chart that winds up showing uh, the short positions, commercial short positions, which in theory could be uh, producers going in there and selling their production forward to guarantee it. How much more production do you then expect with the hedging that we're going on? And if we get to 70, which is your call, that seems like explosive hedging and explosive production growth. Well, if you think about the decoupling of OPEC and WTI, the business that exists today in the U.S. is different than it's ever been. We have an opportunity in the U.S. to produce 20 million barrels. Why are we importing at all? 
Even the Obama administration pushed for the export concept. We shouldn't be matching the export with the import. So you're going to see in this country over the next five years a significant amount of utilization of the production, and that means production is going to go up. Production in the U.S. is going to go up, utilization is going to go up, and the demand is outpacing the supply in 2018, 2019. So, so you're going to see a rise in prices and a lot of strength in our market. So what are your favorite infrastructure plays? Look, I, I'm partial to, uh, to long rail businesses, but I still like uh, the, the space of uh, transporting uh, liquids mm -hmm. across the country, whether it be through a midstream business or even uh, a rail subsidiary. We have an opportunity in this country to spend extensively to drive our future infrastructure, and that's a lot about what the $200 billion annual spend is going to be over the next 10 years. So what happens if you're wrong in terms of oil? If you wind up seeing a higher prices, a ton more production, then lower prices in the future, or if companies decide they want to do more buybacks and dividends versus invest in CapEx, what happens to your infrastructure thesis then? Well, when you think about what you're talking about, that's more of corporate balance sheet. I'm more of infrastructure spend when it comes to driving the government business. So the government's the one pushing forth on the $200 billion a year spend. Corporate strategies change every quarter, right? They're buying dividends, they're playing the, the ARB on their own stock, they're not thinking how it will affect them over years to come. You wouldn't have had in 15 and 16 uh, negative CapEx growth by most of these companies if they knew that oil prices were going to be $60 a barrel in 2017, 2018. So ultimately, I'm driven by the infrastructure spend in the United States. I'm not focused on the infrastructure spend of companies, mid-market, large cap, whatever it may be. Those drive meaningful revenues for me. But I'm thinking about long-term contracts that are hedged by the government credit, not corporate credit. All right, Chad, good to catch up with you. Thank you very much. I never thought of using government as a hedge uh, for your infrastructure play, but that's in essence what you're saying. All right, Chad Brownstein, he's the CEO of Rocky Mountain Resources. Julia, back to you. Thanks so much, Alex Steele, and the CEO of Rocky Mountain Resources there, Chad Brownstein. And Alex, I would not want you to be uncomfortable on this show. Ruthenium, chemical element symbol RU, atomic number 44, rare transition metal belonging to the platinum group. Apparently it's used as a hardener for platinum ah. and palladium. So, um, girls check your engagement rings. <laughs> yes. Anyway, moving on.